Well, I just got back from the junkyard and uh, we're going to get back to working on this custom 1953 Chevy truck. We just got done sectioning it in the last episode and by done sectioning it, I mean just roughly tacked together. But I uh, was at the junkyard uh, today and they had this 47 Oldsmobile out there and it's been out there uh, since the summer at least and I've been eyeing up this grill. Nobody else has bought it and I just couldn't let it uh, get get squashed. It's in such good shape. Um, I don't think we're gonna use it on this truck. These look really good on the 41 to 47 or 48 uh, Fords or Mercury's. And uh, it's just a cool looking grill. And uh, so we bought this and then I didn't need the bumper, but I had to get the, the bumper off to get the grill well it's either that or you have to remove all the the bolts that are in behind here and that just looked like a nightmare i already spent like an hour just getting the outer piece uh, removed and smashing my fingers and slicing my thumb open so you know uh anyways i decided to just get the bumper too um and i thought it was all one piece as it turns out it's actually uh, multiple pieces so this is like an end cap so um, I don't know like maybe uh, a split bumper something like that I don't know anyways I just I'm a hoarder and I just uh, I hate seeing uh, good parts uh, get get squashed or go to waste but I figured seeing as how we're here and we got the parts here we'll just do a quick mock-up just to see if I don't think it's gonna work on this truck, but just to just for fun, and I actually got a new uh, new camera or slash phone yesterday. So let me know if the the quality or the picture or the sound or whatever is any better than than the last video. I know the old camera, the lens was getting pretty scratched up, and uh, not that anybody really needs to see rusty garbage in like ultra clear definition. But either way. Uh, Let's uh, see if this camera works and just do a quick mock-up here before I spend eight hours doing something that's actually important and then find out it didn't record or it's so garbled up. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. It doesn't look like terrible. Obviously have to get sunk in a bit and, uh, and the front of the hood would have to be reshaped, but I guess it just depends on the the exact uh, date we're going for it. Uh, if I don't think it's going to work with the Buick headlight bezels, maybe we'll mock those up and, and just to see. But I think I'd have to go with a conventional French headlight if I was going this route. This kind of sets it into the uh, late 40s, early 50s. And if I do the Buick bezels, then it's going to push it into the kind of early to mid 50s kind of era. So... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, do I want to mock up this bumper too right now? I don't know. It, it looks pretty uh, heavy. I do know that the bumper guard's got to go, but uh, if I was to use it. Uh, I mean, the challenge with all this is to, uh, to keep it restrained. It's easy to just go overboard and just start tacking on like every piece off of every car, kind of George Barris style. But, uh, I kind of want to keep things clean and simple. So I'm not sure if these are going to jive with these. I mean, it, it kind of looks cool, but I don't know. I think it's kind of too... <laughs> It's a bit too early in the project to, to be making any decisions regarding this, but uh, yeah, I think I think conventional French headlights might work better. It's not like it looks like terrible, but it's it just starts to get to be too much, I think. And my original plan was just to run like a kind of a single molded floating grill bar in kind of a molded opening or whatever. So I don't even know this, like I said, I just didn't want to see this, this 
grill get smashed or scrapped because that's or crushed or whatever because uh you know stuff's in a junkyard it, that's going to happen eventually well, i'm an idiot and i forgot to turn the camera on so you missed seeing me struggle with the bumper but uh i think we definitely got a bit too much going on now it looks like a circus up front so it's not really uh it's, it's way too heavy um maybe without the bumper guards the problem is is the bumper it's all kind of ugly underneath the bumper guards so that would take a, a lot of reworking to get that all dialed in and it doesn't look i guess awful but i don't think it works definitely doesn't work with the buick bezels i think the bumper maybe could work with the grill but again i don't know leave a comment i guess yeah, the, the bezels definitely ha would have to, I'd have to go with a conventional French headlight. Um, I, I kind of do like the the shape of the grill because that would kind of work with the, the fadeaway fenders that are going on it. But again, it's just, it's too heavy for, considering the truck is sectioned three inches and just having these massive bumper guards and, you know, all this going on up front, it's just going to look... It's gonna look like the front weighs like 10,000 pounds and the, re and the rest is like, well, I'll make a, I could make a politically incorrect analogy, but I'll just uh, let you leave a comment uh, with your own uh, analogy of how that would look. Anyways, uh, that's a fun way to waste a few minutes mocking stuff up. Let's uh, get this dismantled before uh, it all crashes and falls apart. Didn't survive. 80 years for me to destroy it mocking it up on a piece of junk Chevy truck. Oh well, I'm definitely glad I saved the bumper and the grill, even though they're probably uh, not ending up on this project. Uh, you never know what they might get used on in the future. Malibu? Hey? No? Okay. Last on the road in 1960. Well, now we're on to the boring stuff. We got to weld up our uh, seam here. And the other issue we've got is that uh, pirates stole the latch piece out of this door. Fortunately, uh, we've got this crunchy uh, door that we can chop the necessary pieces out. And uh, then we can actually get a latch in this and, and that will be kind of nice. Well, it seems our simple little door latch splice here is uh, not actually all that simple at all. Some of you may know that uh, Cold War Motors character. Uh, a while back he ripped me off on a 1948 GMC. It seems he's still uh, laughing all the way to the bank. So uh, this donor piece here 
came from one of the doors that came off that truck that were too terrible to use. And it turns out that even this is too terrible to use. So now I have to build this from scratch. And what makes it even better is I spent like two days at the wrecking yard getting that Oldsmobile grill and bumper and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And so I could have just cut this piece out of one of the doors at the wrecking yard, but uh, no, I didn't uh, think to, I didn't, couldn't possibly imagine this piece being rusty and rusted out too, but it is. How could we have not predicted that on the, just, it's never easy. None of this is ever easy. This is the stuff that takes all the time on these uh, custom projects or really any project. So you can see we started cleaning it up and poking at it and rust hole, rust hole, rust hole. And that's just what we can see just from a quick cleaning. So. I'm not going to weld that into here because I mean, that's what the door latch goes on to. That's the, under the most stress, uh, uh, you know, the only other area that's under that kind of stress is where the hinges mount. So we can't really, uh, can't weld garbage into it. So this just became a big project or bigger project than what I wanted. So if any of you were wondering why we didn't end up using these doors, those of you who've been following along from the start know we started out with these. Well, uh, basically the whole door is like that latch assembly. It's Swiss cheese up here, Swiss cheese down here, down here where the latch or the hinge mounts. Just the whole door inside and outside is like that. So, uh, you know, anything's savable, but do I want to spend two months fixing doors that are still going to be pitted up junk at the end of the day that I'll never be happy with. Um, and is anybody really going to watch two months worth of videos just welding little patches here and there into stupid doors when we have usable doors? Sure, there's a better, faster, easier way of countersinking sheet metal, but uh, is there a better, faster way of doing it with the supplies and materials that are within an arm's reach of where I am right now? I don't know. It'll work. It'll work. Not too glorious, but uh, seems to work. So if it works, is it wrong? Yes, probably. Don't care. I don't want to spend any more time on this uh, latch holder rebuild than I have to, because there's actual fun stuff to do. Nobody wants to watch eight hours of this nonsense. Especially not me. If you think the videos are hard to watch, you should try being here in person. Unbearable.
There you go. On to the next crisis.
I'm definitely getting pretty out of uh, practice with the old TIG welding there, so we're going to have to do a little more before we tackle the, the chop on the roof. But it's all welded up, and uh, there it is welded. Uh, pretty ugly weld, but I'm surprised it actually managed to, to hold its shape and not uh, make a complete mess of this inner door. I think I mentioned already, but... Uh, this is getting a full uh, interior panel, probably down to like here or so. So all of this part will be covered. Nice thing about the TIG weld is this is all flat enough that we don't even have to grind it. We can just leave it. We don't have to do anything with it. Cause like I said, it's getting an interior panel over it. Obviously we got to finish out the edges a little better, but uh, that's a problem for another day. Just good to get this all solid and back in one piece again. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, it's not uh, pretty, but it uh, turned out reasonably well, I suppose. I think uh, going through here, right through the center, one of these pleats, I think that would have been a mistake. I think this was the right choice going through here. And uh, the best part is in like 50 years, somebody's going to pull the door panel off and they're going to see this butchery here and they're going to wonder what the heck was going on. I actually uh, think it'd be pretty funny uh, to like section and chop a car like I don't know an eighth of an inch or something like that and then uh, you know finish it out half decent and then get in a wreck so it ends up in the wrecking yard and then somebody comes along and thinks it's a good door or, or quarter panel or whatever and they cut it off and they get home and they're just fighting and fighting with it trying to get it fit and they look on the inside and they see it's all been all welded together that would be fun and actually Actually, that uh, did happen to me too uh, when I used to work collision. Uh, I was fixing like a Dodge Caravan. They weren't that old then, but uh, they, the insurance company sent a new uh, or uh, a used lift gate or tailgate, whatever they're called. And uh, so we got this used one from the wrecking yard and it, you could just tell it had been body work, but I, I bolted it on because I was told to bolt it on and so I did because you do what you're told and then it didn't fit at all and then I looked on the inside and like the entire bottom inside and outside like the bottom foot and a half of it 
had it looked like it had been like arc welded on from another van and this was like only like a maybe like a seven-year-old van at the time and somebody had like spliced a dodge caravan tailgate together right through like the middle from i i have no idea why but it's always an adventure to discover the the stuff people will do and the lengths they'll go to just to you know save a buck or or, or whatever it is they're trying to do but anyways let's uh see if these doors still fit on the truck story uh this is probably about 10 years ago or so there was this new body shop that opened up in town and they were going on our local classified uh site to kind of advertise or get the word out so uh you can put up pictures on there and so they had uh, pictures of their work and uh what they had done is a full body splice on two taxi cabs and a full body splice or full body section is uh, where you take the front half of one car and the back half of another car. One's been in a front end wreck and the other's been in a rear end wreck. And then you literally cut them right through the middle and then weld them back together, which uh, on a modern unibody car is like the worst thing you can do. Uh, they have very specific, you know, places where you're supposed to weld them together and uh, if you don't do that they get pretty upset but anyways they had this I think it was like a Toyota Camry or whatever they used to make taxi cabs out of around here yeah full body section on two taxi cabs spliced together in the middle and this was their uh, their big hey look what we can do so I thought that was uh, I wish I would have saved pictures of it because it was like they showed like the whole step-by-step -step process and they had like a website and everything and it just i, I really should have saved uh, pictures because it was just the most spectacular thing i'd ever seen and then uh yeah i don't know what that has to do with anything but just uh if you have a toyota camry in saskatchewan that's an ex uh, taxi cab you might want to uh, look at trading it in i guess Our uh, homemade cobbled together latch thingy seems to fit okay. Uh, not our finest work there. I just, uh, I want to work on the fun stuff. I don't want to, you know, spend 100 hours on a door thing. So uh, the latch fits, the door closes. What else do you really want? Uh, I also realize now that cutting a piece out of a donor door and welding it in wouldn't have worked anyways. I'd Because uh, there is an inner plate there. And in this case, I was able to save the inner plate from the uh, the crusty door. It was still good somehow, but the outer one was rusted. And so I had to weld the inner plate on first, then the outer, then plug weld it together. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to, to weld that inner plate to the inner structure without separating them. So no matter what, I did have to build this outer piece. It's a hassle, but uh, didn't really have much option other than starting with a better door. And... Uh, we just can't uh, not have junk around here. So that's that's the story there. Good news is, is that the passenger side is still intact so we don't have to build this side. So that'll save a little bit of time, uh, which, you know, we need all the extra time we can get in working on a project of this uh, degree of decrepitness. All right, so uh, just uh, want to get this door tweaked out just a little bit just so it's a little more flushed up here uh, if you recall uh, this is how it fit before we uh, we cut the door in half and sectioned it so uh, you know we know nothing has changed but uh, now that we kind of got a little more of a solid uh, something going on uh, I just want to tweak that a little bit so we're gonna have to uh, bend the hinge to to try and get that a little better I don't think we're gonna get a hundred percent 
just because of the way the shapes are but uh, if we can get it closer then uh, it'll probably uh, probably be better maybe Getting better, but uh, still needs to come out a bit more. Let's give that a try. Hey, yeah, that's looking a lot better now. I think just uh, for the time being, uh, that's definitely you know acceptable. We're not in the final fitment stage, but uh, I'm also, as I've said before, these profiles are not exactly the same, especially right here. This area right here where the paint is still sticking is where the factory lead seam is. So when they welded this panel, this upper panel to here, uh, it was just overlapped and then they let it over it so that's always a little off so we'll have to correct that later but uh that's definitely a, a huge improvement for you know maybe only an eighth or so of an inch of actual maybe even less than that tweaking that hinge and it looks like possibly the bottom hinge will have to do bend it the opposite way just to get it in a little bit but uh again i think for now everything is just so loose without all the firewall and stuff in it that it would be kind of pointless to go much further. I just wanted to get it a little closer. The other uh, issue or thing we'll have to correct is if we look at the door here, obviously moving this out moves the top of the door out and we can see damage here from where someone was, it looks like they were prying it to get the into the door. So uh, I can tell just from before I even put the door on that this part of the door is tweaked out. So uh, again, once we get more structure in the cab, uh, we can put a block of wood in and bend the top of the door back in to where it needs to be. So again, none of that's a big deal, but uh, just uh, it's good to get this lining up a little better here. Another thing I'll mention here before we go to the other side, is whenever you're uh, adjusting or fitting doors, always have all the bolts in, every single bolt. They all have to be in and they all have to be snugged up. Uh, I see it all the time where uh, guys will put uh, only one or two bolts in the hinges, not just on these trucks, but on a any vehicle. And they'll do that right all the way up to paint. Then when they go to do final assembly, put it all back together, all the bolts and suddenly nothing fits at all and they can't figure out why you have to have all the bolts in it, it it's amazing you know you can put in one or two bolts and it'll fit totally fine and then you go in and put in the remaining bolts and it it'll move the door as much as I've, a quarter of an inch i've seen just you know just having that extra bolt or two in there so very very important to have all the bolts in before you commit to anything which it's a hassle because, you know, you got to take the door on and off every time to fix these hinges. But that's just the way it is. You know, it, nothing is easy, unfortunately. I think we'll call it on this one for now. Again, it's just a very rough fit, but I'm quite happy with uh, where we're progressing there. It's looking all very promising. So we can we can fix everything else as we go. The other thing to remember as well is that when I 
bring the lower hinge in, which it looks like I'm gonna have to do, it's gonna move this out more as well. So it's, it's a fine kind of balancing point between both hinges. You don't wanna just do one major adjustment. Uh, you gotta kind of sneak up on it. And again, it's a, it's a hassle taking the door on and off 700 times, but this is just all part of the, the game, I guess. So I, I think uh, just for now, for our rough fit, we're gonna call that good. Door opens and closes, doesn't rub anywhere. So uh, I'd say the, the sectioning was a, a total success. So on the passenger side here, we have the exact same situation. You can see this is all very in here at the body line. It's too far in going upwards here. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Won't that be fun? And uh, you see, we now got this side looking a lot better. On this side, you can really notice the uh, the difference in, in profiles. The body line here is much more rounded than this. So I'm really only concerned, you know, just with getting the, the outer dimensions lined up. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to either slit this and bring it down or uh, bump this edge out, which again, that's all, that's all a later date. I just want to get it wrapped in at this stage. You can also see uh, on this side, uh, how it is out more here but I'm only concerned with this right now because you can see this panel has louvers stamped in it and it's got multiple different uh, scenarios of collision damage that have happened to it so it is in it's been hit and repaired and, and hit again and and then plus we also have this factory lead seam here so I'm more confident in in you know this shape than I am in any of this shape. And we are remaking this entire uh, area here because we're shaving the louvers. So only really concerned about this right now. Yeah, this is uh, this is the only tool you need to adjust or bend the hinges to get them uh, more flushed out with the body. That and a bench vise. I'll put a, uh, a picture on the screen here uh, from the internet that shows the diagram or whatever. Bend one way to go out, bend the other way to go in. Pretty straightforward. Bend a little at a time, refit, bend, refit, bend, refit. And uh, usually by the, the 20 or 30th time, you'll have uh, better fitting doors. So I've been getting a lot of comments lately uh, about my jacket. Uh, people say it's disgusting or that I need it. <laughs> Or, uh, or that I need a new jacket. Uh, one fellow said that this jacket uh, makes me look like I don't. <laughs> so I've been getting a lot of flack in the comment sections lately uh, from people who said my jacket is disgusting, that I need a new jacket. Uh, one fellow said that my jacket looks like I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, Big Bird has a special message for all those people out there who don't like my jacket. I agree with that one guy who said, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but I do know that if I wear my Sunday best out in the shop, it's gonna get covered in oil and gas. It's gonna get set on fire. And to me, uh, I would rather spend my money on the project that I'm working on uh, rather than clothes that are just going to get destroyed in a matter of hours or minutes. Also, uh, I don't think I've mentioned on the channel before, but uh, this uh, jacket and the sweater underneath are actually uh, an old uh, family heirloom. Uh, it's been passed down from generation to generation. Uh, it originally belonged to my uh, great, 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 great uncle Herbert. Uh, who was a philosopher during the Age of Enlightenment. And so, you know, it, it has a lot of sentimental value and it, it really means a lot to me. And I actually quite enjoy this jacket, uh, would you believe? So, you know, it also hasn't been washed in like a really, really long time. So it has the delightful aroma of gear oil and 
previously enjoyed craft dinner, which just ensures that I'm going to be the star of any social engagement that I attend. Just wanted to apologize for the uh, boring episode this week. Uh, I was really hoping to get more done, uh, but we had a bit of a uh, quadrajet uh, calamity on the old daily driver, so I had to waste a bunch of time getting that sorted out. More on that next week. And uh, hoping we can get some more work done next week. I got to get this firewall put back in and finished up, get the back of the cab reattached to the rest of the body. And there's tons of work, so uh, we got to play catch up now. But uh, again, apologize for the less uh, thrilling uh, episode here. But uh, this is all stuff that has to be done, and I'm trying to document the whole process for you all. So, yeah, that's just the way it is, I guess. Anyways, before we go, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to uh, everyone for their uh, support uh, this project so far. It seems people are really excited about the chicken truck. Uh, so I'm going to do my uh, darndest to keep going on it for as long as I can. Uh, just, uh, especially the last video there, just the comments uh, uh, I was reading through, just the amount of support to the comments. And uh, it shows up in my analytics that more of you, the regular viewers, are, are tuning in to see this project come together. So that uh, really, uh, really helps out a lot. Um, the, the whole YouTube algorithm has not uh, picked up on this project yet. Anyways, we won't get into that, but uh, uh, I also just uh, was absolutely blown away uh, by the, the number of donations we got after the last video. And uh, we also had a bunch of new people, uh, new patron supporters show up on uh, Patreon. So uh, that was just like, I, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you to all the folks who who have been sending in the donations, uh, whether it's through uh, PayPal or, or the super chat button, or uh, uh, especially to uh, the folks over on Patreon uh, who have been uh, uh, supporting the show on a monthly basis. It, uh, for, you know, for those folks that, that actually are, are chipping in, you know, it, it's just, uh, it makes a, a huge difference to, to whether or not I can work on this project and actually film it for you. So thank you, and uh, we'll be back again next week with more chicken truck action. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Hoping to crank out, uh, you know, a couple extra videos here and there as well. And uh, we're gonna start putting in some hard hours on it so we can get back to the fun stuff.